Hello everyone, my name is Aneta and I am Melbourne based visual artist working in cross disciplinary field visual communication with a focus on Australian music industry. I'm mostly a photographer, but I like to attach all the things because I can do anything. In today's video, I will be subjectively reviewing albums Orca and The Court of Crimson King. If you don't know this feature, on my videos you can watch the video somewhere here or here you know somewhere this is gonna be a feature for the future videos as well the other thing that we're gonna do today is we will be re-editing Frank Carter and the rattlesnake images that I took back in January in 2020 and I'm re-editing because I don't like them and I'll tell you why other than that I'll share two other albums to listen and yeah let's roll so I had a mini obsession with Gus Dapiton when I first started listening to him but I haven't listened to a full mama before and I won't say that I'm a big fan of Orca. Saying this breaks my heart but I also checked what Pitchfork has to say about it and it wasn't better than I thought. I'll have to agree that the album sounded monotonic and I could hardly remember the songs that stood out apart from Grimm and both humorous, but later had an amazing video produced for it, so it kinda already was in my playlist and I already loved it. So it's a good song, but it's also my favorite. And yeah, all in all, I'll give this album a 6 out of 10. And I think that 6 is a pretty good number, you know? It can be a good album for everyone, unless you are Beyonds. The next one is In a Quartum Crimson King and look, I was nicely surprised because the sound of the album was not what I expected. Let's appreciate the album cover for a second and how it was scaring me away. I was ready for a low-key trash metal vibes and I got progressive rock. I genuinely thought, why am I hearing this just now? Where have I been? Nevertheless, the songs were long and my patience was not. I was super spaced out most of the album, having a hard time following the music. I definitely needed to be in a different mood to listen to this album, but maybe it's an album for rainy days, where you lay in bed soulless and want some soundtrack to keep you company, but you can't digest the beat dancing songs. I usually would go for King Cruel, the ooze, at those days, but now I can listen to King Crimson too. Both kings. I just need King Gizzard to release a sad album. I rate the album 8 out of 10 because I will be listening to it again and again and again until it's gonna become a 10. Let me know what you think about the albums, if you like them or not, if you listen, I'm keen to hear your subjective opinion because, you know, if I don't like them, it doesn't mean that you won't. There are enough people to like the albums. Right. I'll tell you the story about this shoot while I'm re-editing the selected images. So let's go back to January 2020. I got this opportunity to shoot Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes through a friend who worked with them on their Australian turn and they looped me with their management. I was nervous. It was probably the biggest gig and artist I have ever worked with and I was not entirely sure how to seem professional. I like doing things my way, I liked having my own rules, I liked having the freedom to be on stage, using the flash, etc. I don't entirely enjoy being around lots of people where I feel pressured to meet the industry communication standards and have small talks and you know do the network thing. But anyways, if you get a command from a band not to use flash or to be on stage, you probably won't use the flash and stay in the pit to not get kicked out of the gig and just to be respectful because you know like they ask you so you might as well listen to them not using the flash at the gig on the first day and not being allowed to properly get on the stage fucked with my confidence i'd be fine enough if the venue would have been better lit but most of the times the lighting was just strobes flashing on and off so i couldn't wrap my head around why they didn't let me use the flash because you literally wouldn't even notice at the same time i also missed the shots where Frank was in the crowd. Why? Well, mostly because it was pitch fucking dark and my camera couldn't really deal with it. So I was a little bit bummed, but on a positive note, I enjoyed the gig and fell in love with the band and Frank because he FaceTimed his daughter back at home during his set and sang a song and it was the sweetest thing that I've witnessed in a long time. I woke up the next day and first thing was to edit images from last night because I have to send them out in a couple of hours before I leave for another shoot. I sat down and prepared myself for a disaster because 
I was really doubting if I will have enough images to deliver and that made me seriously anxious and I thought that I'm the worst photographer, you know? I'm a shit photographer. I can shoot without flash, even if I always do, but yesterday I proved myself that I am a shit photographer. I worked it out, I edited the images, I pushed my limits, sent them to the management and moved on with my day. I did everything I could do, but I also knew that today they were having an all-ages gig at the venue where I shot a couple of times before, so I reached out to the owner and got the pass, which means that after this shoot, I'm heading straight to shoot again, do the gig. I rocked up, have a chat with people that I know because I finally do not feel the pressure to impress anyone because I'm not working, you know, like I'm shooting for myself and for the venue. No one's paying me, it's all fine. I have my flash charged because today I'm shooting for myself. I found a nice corner at the front of the stage and another photographer comes up to me saying, we're not allowed to use flash. I was like, look, for fuck, why? Why? I don't get it. So I went to the owner, I asked him, I was like, can I use flash? Like, I don't... Who's... Whose word is it? Who has to decide that? And she was like, you slash if they'll tell anything, just kind of come to me, you know? And I was like, sure, that works for me. I got the pass. I'm sure things should not work that way though. And I definitely was stubborn and problematic. But at that point, I didn't care and I do not regret it. During the gig, all the other photographers started using the flash as well and no one kicked us out or said anything. So I'm really not sure what was the issue. Maybe some of you know why why the flash is the problem when it's not, you know, really doesn't make a difference, any difference. I love the second day images way more and the gig felt more personal because of the tiny space. I shared them with the band's management because as well, why not? I don't find that problematic. However, I buried the experience somewhere deep down in me just because I was never proud of those first day images. I hated the colors, something was just entirely not working out and I know that if I have a negative experience attached to the work of the, or the project, it will never be the best work. Shooting Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes was a milestone for me. It was an important achievement in my career and thus I really wanted to sit down and re-edit the image properly so I would be proud of it. Sometimes things don't work the way you want them and that's fine. Everything is an experience and this particular one reminded me to be who I truly am, as weird as it may sound. But being honest and transparent with how I work and push more to set my own rules is the lesson that I learned. I think it's easy to get overwhelmed by bigger names and the managements. It's easy to feel, oh, I'm just a 22 year old girl from Lithuania. What do I know? They know more. I have to listen to them. They've been in the industry for longer. But I forgot that I was a photographer there and who knew her craft, which they signed for and I forgot to ask why I can't use Splash and I was too intimidated to talk and convince them to let me go on the stage while not being in the way. Like I know how to do these things, like I can do it. I was scared and it affected my work and my lesson is to be able to stand for myself and the way I work because I don't know, it's just, you know, it's like my craft. It's my craft and I work the way I work. They, I don't know why, why the flash was a problem. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, that made me feel like shit a little bit. But here we have um newly edited images. They're fucking beautiful. Way stronger colors, way more character. The character represents the band better than I edited in January. I don't know, I learned the lesson and it's fine, like I'm not sad about it or whatever. I now have new images, I can post them, like new ones. So that's cool. Let me know which edit you like more, the previous ones or the new ones and... Let's see what albums we're gonna listen to. Okay, since King Crimson wasn't much of a mood, this was more of a mood but a little bit too monotonic so i want to listen to nicholas jaratella's album and i want to review tyler the creator igor so that's it for today let me know what you thought about orca and the court of crimson king what you thought about the images follow me on instagrams bye guys i love you very 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 much and let me know if you have any questions if you want me to talk about certain any things related to music photography or not you know the drill and see you next week bye